otter. I have a lot of ideas, most of them are pretty bad. This week's bad idea is based on one of my favorite franchises. I'll let you guess which one. Here's your back of the box summary. Welcome, Ensign, to your first posting as a hollow programmer in the Federation Department of Education, Leisure, and Information. Your role here on Jupiter One will be to use our state-of-the-art development-enabled holodecks to create unique holo programming for various Federation purposes, including the needs of Starfleet. Create programs to meet specific briefs or explore your own stories. Publish your programs for the enjoyment or edification of others. In your off hours, feel free to explore the station and interact with other crew members or visitors. Once again, Ensign, welcome aboard. The first influence is probably pretty obvious, and it's the holodeck from Star Trek. If you're not a Star Trek fan and you don't know what a holodeck is, first of all, you should become a Star Trek fan. It's an amazing series and one of my favorites. Second of all, a holodeck is a room that converts energy into matter for education or entertainment purposes. So you can walk into a holodeck, run a program, and suddenly you're in Victorian London or in a far-flung future or playing out a spy novel from the 1960s. Because the energy is converted into matter, it's entirely interactable. So imagine a VR headset where you're actually just in a room and you can touch and interact and talk to characters and it's actually physically there because that energy is converted into matter. So it's a great storytelling device for the series and gets Starfleet and characters into a lot of fun situations. The second influence is a little game called 3D Movie Maker. This is a game that was released for Windows in the mid 90s. A lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for it, and I'm definitely one of them. This is the main character, McZ. I always found him vaguely threatening as a child. As an adult, I still find him vaguely threatening. But basically, 3D Movie Maker was exactly what it sounds like. It was a kit where you could make a movie with using uh, preset characters who had animations that you could use to have them walk around available scenes. Um, you could cut to different angles in those scenes. It was a way for kids to make digital movies using assets that were available to them, like a toolbox. And then the last inspiration here is just VR headsets. These are becoming increasingly common. I have one, I use it all the time. So let's have a 3D movie maker based on the holodeck for the Oculus. Why not? Let's do it. So just like in 3D Movie Maker, where there are predefined scenes available for you to put your characters, your props, and have your program play out in, in Hologram Program Director, all of those scenes would be Star Trek themed. So all of our favorite places from the series would be available, like Starfleet Academy, the Bridge of Tarak Noor, uh, Ten Forward, where I've always personally wanted to hang out. Um, all of these scenes that we love from the franchise would be available to us to have different angles, um, and be a fully immersive environment that we could explore as we create our own holodeck programming. In addition to scenes, you would also have props and effects that you could put into the scenes themselves. Um, so this is everything from the ships. Of course, you can't have a Star Trek hologram novel creation without the ability to have ships in it. So you could have the shuttles, you could have the ships themselves and also effects like phaser fire. You would wanna be able to do a shooting simulator or a flight simulator within this program. So that of course would be part of it as well. Last but not least, we would need characters to fill out our hollow novels. So all of our franchise favorites like Mr. Holm or Lieutenant Sutter would show up and be available as you know characters we can interact with, characters you can assign dialogue to, and there would also be alien species who are not sentient, like this amazing dog creature. Unicorn dog, I believe he's called. The mechanics on this one would be fairly light. Most of the fun of these games is just in the sandbox. It's a set of tools to tell a story with your favorite characters in a unique and cool way where you don't have to be a animator or someone who can make all this art on your own. It's just a sandbox of easy to use tools that anyone can tell compelling stories with. That's most of the fun. But there could be some light mechanics, something like a brief mechanism. These would basically be prompts that can give you ideas to kickstart what you want to tell a story with using these preset tools. These could be made available to everyone who has the game, and then players could submit their answers to these briefs, and people could vote on which ones are their favorites. Thinking about these briefs, there could be two different kinds of briefs. The first would be your official assignments through the Federation. These would be, you know, educational materials or entertainment materials, but that would be wholesome enough to be officially assigned by the Federation. So things like 
design a Borg infiltration training program. What should citizens do if there is a Borg attack on their home planet? Or things like design a Vulcan meditation program, an environment that brings mindfulness and peaceful um, reflection. So again, very wholesome, Federation driven. I think the other kind of breathe could come from maybe a back market dealer that is a little less wholesome. So these would be things like design a program of um, Frangi gambling dens or beach party on Ryza. Little less wholesome, little less official, but still a whole lot of fun. I mentioned in the back of the box summary that this game is set on Jupiter 1. That's really meant to just be a light wrapper for a game that's mainly about the sandbox storytelling mechanic. It's not like there's going to be a deep narrative here, but I just thought it would be a fun little wrapper that you could explore the station. I picked Jupiter 1 for a couple different reasons. First, it's mentioned a little bit, but we've never had a deep dive just into Jupiter 1. What's it like? Who works there? Uh, we have bits and pieces, but not the whole story, so it's always fun to dive into those places that you just know a little bit about in the franchise you know and love, and get to know that place on a deeper level. The second reason I picked Ju Jupiter 1 is because this is a game about designing holograms, and a lot of the leading holographic research in the Federation does take place on, uh, on Jupiter 1, so it just makes sense to have this game set here. I mentioned that Jupiter 1 is known as one of the leading places where holographic research is done uh, in the Federation, and with that in mind, as part of that Jupiter 1 wrapper, you'd be able to interact with your co-workers on the station, and of course that would include the wonderful and charming Dr. Zimmerman and my personal, one of my personal absolute favorites in the franchise as a whole, the dear Mr. Barkley, uh, Mr. Broccoli, if you will. Um, again, just two little fan favorites thrown in as interactable characters in this light rapider of the Jupiter One station. Because it is a station, you could also have other cameos coming through, so others uh, who are favorites in the series could of course pass through the station and it, it would be reasonable and it would make sense in that universe. So that is Star Trek Holodeck Program Director, just another one of my bad little ideas. I appreciate you guys dropping by, and until next time, always remember rule of acquisition number 59, free advice is seldom cheap. Hey, it's me, Cabinet Otter. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, or come hang out with me live on Twitch. See you soon!